Hey everyone, I'm back again with my 13-inch MacBook Pro Touch Bar to show you some more gaming footage. This machine has an Iris 550 GPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM. First up is XCOM 2. This is a fairly popular turn-based strategy game that came out in 2016. I'm running it under Mac OS at a resolution of 1440 by 900. I've had to set the graphics options pretty much as low as they can go to get reasonable performance. Settings like texture and shadow detail are turned down, and most of the post-processing effects are off. Now, because this is a turn-based strategy game, gameplay is going to consist of a mix of cutscenes and an isometric view where you can issue commands to your characters. You can see that the frame rates are holding fairly steady somewhere in the mid to high 20s during the cutscenes. Once you're in the isometric view, the frame rates seem to hold steady a bit closer to 30. Now that can change obviously depending on what's going on on screen, but generally I found that holds true for most areas of the game. You can see that despite being on the lowest detail settings, the game still looks pretty good. The isometric view has some good detail, and view distances aren't bad, and once you get into the cutscenes, there's lots of detail on the characters and close-ups. Now because this is a turn-based strategy game, frame rate isn't quite as important as it would be in something like an action game. So you might be able to get away with turning up the settings a little bit if you don't mind the game frequently dropping below 30 frames per second. Next up is Rust. This is a multiplayer only survival game that's been in early access for a while now. The graphics have seen several upgrades over the years, so it's become a fairly graphically intensive game. Now, because of that, I've had to turn the graphics settings down quite low to get the game to play at a reasonable frame rate. I've gone with the lowest graphical preset, but then I also went in and turned a few more settings down. Things like draw distance were still quite high, even at the lowest preset. I also had to turn down most of the quality settings to make sure the frame rate stayed stable. Now, at these minimal settings, the game really doesn't look fantastic. If you've seen screenshots or a video of it being played on a higher-end machine, you'll notice there's a lot of detail missing here, especially with the post-processing effects turned off. The frame rate does seem to hang in the low 20s, which is a bit low for an action game like this, especially when you're playing against other people. There's a lot of pop-in, and things in the distance really don't have much detail to them at all. Lowering the resolution didn't seem to help much, and turning up any of the settings really tanked the frame rate. I'd say that the game is definitely playable on this machine, but it's not the best experience. It is worth noting that this game does seem to run a lot better under Windows on this MacBook, so you might be able to get a much more playable frame rate if you try it under Windows 10.
Okay, now we're going to take a look at Civilization 6. I'm running this game under Windows 10. And I'm running it at a 1440 by 900 resolution. The game defaulted to the low graphics preset, and I pretty much left it exactly as it was. This game has a built-in benchmark feature, but before I run that, I want to see what the experience is like starting a brand new game with nothing really happening. So you can see, at the very beginning of a game, you're going to get a very solid 60 frames per second. That's because there's really not much happening on screen. As the game goes on and more units get added to the board, you'll see the frame rate slowly start to go down. Now we'll take a look at the included benchmark utility. This benchmark simulates a game with pretty much as many things happening as possible. You can see that the frame rates roughly cut in half from what we saw earlier. I think some of this is due to the number of units on screen, but since this isn't the nicest looking game, at least some of the frame rate drop is probably caused by the CPU power needed to calculate all the AI players moves. Still, the frame rate does hold steady, and this game is very playable at these performance levels. I'll let the benchmark run all the way through so that you can compare how performance matches up versus other computers. And finally, let's take a look at Grand Theft Auto V. I got a ton of requests for this game, so here we go. The game defaulted me to the lowest graphical presets, which is where I left it to start off. I'll run a benchmark later with a few of the settings turned up so that you can see the performance difference. I'll say right away that even though this game is on the lowest detail settings, it still looks fantastic. All of the shadows and textures look good, and despite the draw distance being turned down and the population density being on low, it still seems like there's lots going on on the screen. It's also really nice to see the frame rate holding steady between 40 and 50 frames per second. The controls respond well and the gameplay is very smooth at these settings.
performance is also quite good during the game's cutscenes. You can see here that we're almost at 60 frames per second, and there's a lot of detail in these characters when they're up close. I am honored to announce to you that you are employee of the month. Huh? Anyway, congratulations. It wasn't easy picking a winner. <laughs> yeah, me, Lamar, your nephew Sacha with the Twitch. Look, man, it's been a real honor, homie. But I gotta move forward in my life. It seems like all I do is let people tell me what to do and I do it and nothing changes. The frame rate even holds steady when there's a lot of action going on in the screen. You can see here we're still above 50 frames per second despite there being a lot of characters around and just a lot going on. Now we'll take a look at the built-in benchmarks. You can see how the game performs in various different situations.
The last thing I want to do with this game is run the benchmark again, but this time with some of the settings turned up. I'm going to compare this to the other benchmarks so you can get an idea of the performance impact of changing some of the graphics settings. This time I've turned up the population density and variety a notch, and I've increased the distance scaling. I've also set texture and shader quality to high. These changes are actually fairly noticeable once you see them in-game. I'm going to overlay the previous benchmark on the right so you can get an idea for the performance difference with these settings turned up. Overall, we see a performance drop somewhere between 10 and 15% with the settings turned up. The game's still very playable though at these frame rates. So that was a quick look at a few more games on this 13-inch MacBook Pro. If you'd like to suggest another game or see something else with this laptop, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.